Our next story sticks to the issue of food scarcity and a professor at the University of Arizona whose research attempts to offer a solution to a problem facing our world in the year 2050. One thing to note, we filmed this story late last year prior to the pandemic. About 7.8 billion people share our planet today. While starvation and famine remain ever-present issues, University of Arizona professor Gagi Davidowitz says it will reach a tipping point in 30 years when the population is expected to reach 10 billion human beings. At that point, the world cannot produce enough protein to sustain 10 billion people. At the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Davidowitz is developing what he sees as an obvious alternative to traditional protein sources, insects. What do insects do for you? It's what gets me up in the morning. And I know it's nutritious. I've read some of your research about the benefits of eating, let's say, grasshoppers over steak or chicken. That's correct. So insects are very high in protein. They have built-in fiber, the exoskeleton, which vertebrate livestock doesn't, so you can put away the metamucil. And the lipids that they have, the fats that they have, are uh, healthy fats. An insect physiologist and evolutionary biologist, Davidowitz knows insects as a food source isn't new. By his own research, 80% of all nations accept it culturally, mostly in Eastern countries. But recent trends indicate Western consumers are also working up an appetite for bug-based products. A report from Barclays Investment Bank in London estimates the edible insect industry will generate billions of dollars by 2030. All the research that we're doing, people are moving more and more to accepting insects as a uh, potential source of protein. And there's two big ways to do it. One is, is educating the public. Um, a second is um, you grind it up into a powder and it's an ingredient in the food so you don't notice it's an insect. Davidowitz sees an opportunity to add bugs from the Sonoran Desert to the menu. At the college, he and his researchers are devising ways to harvest about a dozen native insect species. Their methods also aim to address other environmental issues. They include a concept known as vertical farming, which can drastically reduce the land and resources needed to yield high amounts of protein. When you're rearing livestock, it's a mono layer. You can only grow them on one layer, but with insects, you can go vertical. And here we're going up 12, 14 layers, but in a warehouse, you can go up 100 layers if you have the equipment to handle that. At the U of A farm, research technician Hunter Clark walked us through how this approach applies to mealworms. Yeah, here we have some adult mealworms. Um, In a space of about six square feet, the cycle begins here, where adults lay eggs. Hatch larvae grow in separate bins. These are full-size mealworms that we're currently processing to turn into human food. Some are set aside so they can develop into pupae. These are the cocoon phase that the adults will crawl out of in a week to two weeks. Adult beetles then continue the cycle. Sustainability also factors into what Davidowitz and his team feed their insects. They work with farmers to obtain produce that would otherwise end up in a landfill. 30 to 40 percent of all the food that's uh, produced in the United States gets thrown into the landfill. 30 to 40 percent. That's a third of your plate. So we're taking something that would have gone into the garbage, making that a food for the insects, and then the insects a food for us. But it begs the question, how do they taste? So these are mealworms. All right. <laughs> um, and enjoy. We grew these uh, here on campus at the University of Arizona. Um, so they're homegrown insects. Just pick them up and put them in your mouth. And you mentioned different insects have different tastes. Correct. OK, so what am I expecting here when I consume to these? Me, um, this is a, a slightly nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. Is that what you get? It's almost like bean sprouts to me, but I don't know. Well, that's actually, <laughs> one, one, of, one of my students actually said it, was, it tastes like beans, bean sprouts. Other people say that doesn't really have a taste. So, you know, we all have different taste buds. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Over the next few years, Davidowitz says he'll work on turning the techniques developed in his lab into a business venture, joining forces with the university through a company that will sell bags of insect meal. What is your dream when it comes to insects and people consuming them as food? That they won't think twice about it. That, oh, let's add some onions, let's add some garlic, let's throw in some mealworms and make an omelet. What would you like to say to people who love their steak, love their chicken? I love my steak and I love my chicken. Um, I am not going to give it up, and they shouldn't either. 
Um, I think it will make a big difference if part of the diet becomes other sources of protein, not necessarily insects, it could also be plants. But you like your steaks, eat your steaks. Um, but if we can reduce the amount of steaks overall, that will have a big impact on the environment.